So um, this ad is sponsored by Anchor. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Hi there, this is Robin Norgren and I'm your host for Montessori Creativity and the Meaning of Life. You can find all the work that I do on Instagram under Robin underscore Norgren or at UBU for Life. This is from Chris Gillibo's book, The Pursuit, The Happiness of Pursuit. As I talked with Sandy, Tom, and many others who'd stepped away from a conventional life to pursue something different, I wanted to understand why. In some cases, the choices that people made were serious and consequential. They had to give something up to, per- to achieve the life experiences they wanted. What causes someone to undertake a big adventure for little reward? In many cases, with a real chance of failure or at least major sacrifice? The answers seemed elusive. When I asked the why questions of people all over the world, I noticed that the answers were often circular, perhaps even unsatisfactory. It made sense at the time, some people said. In an answer that could just as easily had been, I wanted to do it, so I did. I found the real answer as I dug deeper into the mix of frustration and inspiration that drives action. Most of the people I talked to in one way or another had been dissatisfied with their normal lives. They wanted something deeper than they had known or experienced, and they either found it or created it. Something had to give. Sasha Martin, a 30-year-old mother in Tulsa, Oklahoma, described the beginnings of an ambitious culinary project as a means of fighting back against complacency. Something had to give, she said, and I was settling into the comfortable rut of wife and mother, but losing my sense of adventure. Losing something in this case, the sense of adventure, and going back in an effort to reclaim it, is a common characteristic of beginning a quest. In quests of old, The hero had to travel across distant lands in search of reclaiming a grail or a key. These days, we often have to recover something more intangible, but no less important. Many of us undertake an adventure to rediscover our sense of self. A crazy idea that wouldn't leave me alone. Nate Dam was a 20-year-old from Portland, Maine, who couldn't get something out of his head. At first, he told me, it was just a crazy idea that wouldn't leave me alone until I did it. It nagged me daily for about two years before I actually decided to go for it. One day, he set out to turn the idea into action, one step at a time, from Maine to California. Over the next seven months, he walked across the United States. I just couldn't live that way anymore. Travis Enix who weighed 400 pounds and committed to practicing Tai Chi chi and writing down everything he ate for 1,000 days, describes how he finally came to the point where he had to change. I just couldn't live that way anymore, he said. I didn't want to make a small adjustment. I had to completely shift directions to find a new way of life. Lesson. When you sense discontent, pay attention. The answer isn't always go for it, though often it is. But you shouldn't neglect the stirring. Properly examined, feelings of unease can lead to a new life of purpose. Discontent is a powerful spark. When you're filled with a sense of dissatisfaction that isn't easily resolved, you may start wondering about making some changes. 
On its own, however, discontent is not sufficient to start a fire or inspire a quest. Lots of people are walking around unhappy, but most don't make radical changes in their lives, especially to the point of pursuing a quest. Discontent may be the instigator, but what is the motivator? What causes someone to take action? If you want to get the embers burning, you have to blend dissatisfaction with inspiration. And then you have to connect the dissatisfaction to a greater purpose. Mash up. Dissatisfaction plus big idea plus willingness to take action equals new adventure. After being laid off, Sandy was less than excited at the prospect of competing for another job right away. But that wasn't all. She also had an idea in mind. The dream to travel Route 66 was calling her name. And she answered the call by purchasing a camper and announcing her plans to everyone she knew. Others began the pursuit of a dream by asking, what if? And found a way to make the preposterous thing come true. What if I could walk across an entire country? Would it really be possible to produce a symphony that requires 1,000 performers? Could I stop illegal logging by climbing to the top of a eucalyptus tree and staying there for a whole year? Why did Tom Allen, who left England for life on the road, turn down his prospects for a good job and an easy life? He uses the word discomfort. I felt a deep discomfort with the life I'd been prescribed. I had some pre-existing interests and desires, so seeing that others had made that same leap, I packed it all in and followed a dream of my own. Dissatisfaction? Check. Re-examining personal interest? Check. Inspired by role models? Check. Finally, the most critical step, Tom took action. In my book, Your Creative Peace, Finding and Deepening Your Creative Voice While Connecting with God, I chronicled an interview I did with Jennifer Euchert. Her business name is Studio JRU, and her creative influences included God's Beauty All Around and her mom. She is a mixed-media artist living in rural Nebraska. Gravel roads, fresh air, peace and quiet. She's married to her best friend. Art has been a lifelong passion of hers. She says, I feel blessed to have known since I was young that art was the gift God granted me for this journey. I want my work to reflect the beauty of God, and I hope it brings joy and inspiration to those who see it. What is some of your earliest creative memories? I remember as a young girl, I would sit in front of the TV watching painters on a local television station. I would have my paints and scrap and scrap cardboard or something like that to paint on. Then I would paint right along with them. It was so much fun. I remember putting together photo shoots with my sisters of our dolls, and we would use our sandbox as a beach. I remember making bracelets with my friends to sell. We even made order forms. Did your creative habits make a smooth transition into your adult life? Yes, they did. My favorite class in grade school was art. My parents found me an art teacher in our town that I was able to take classes from. I was always creating at home. I took the one and only art class available in high school. Then I chose to go to an art co college. It has always been a part of my life. If you had a creative hiatus, what event or circumstances brought you back to your creative lifestyle? I've not really had a hiatus. I love to create for myself, for my family, for my business. Every once in a while, I just take a break and I step back because I need the break and get, in order to get the creativity flowing again but it has never been far from me. 
How has God been a part of your creative process? God has always been an important part of my life. He gets all the credit for the gifts that I have been blessed with. I feel he has put art in my heart, and this is what he wants me to do. I couldn't be more happy with that. Can You Imagine by Mary Oliver Can you imagine, for example, what the trees do, not only in lightning storms or the watery dark of a summer night or under the white nets of winter, but now and now and now, whenever we're not looking, Surely you can't imagine they just stand there looking the way they look when they're looking. Surely you can't imagine they don't dance from the root up, wishing to travel a little, not cramped so much as wanting a better view, or more sun, or just as avidly more shade. Surely you can't imagine that they just stand there loving every minute of it, the birds, or the emptiness, the dark rings of the years slowly and without a sound, thickening, and nothing different, unless the wind, and then only in its own mood, comes to visit. Surely you can't imagine patience and happiness like that. 